time I got robbed when I was bartending, like that's in front of my face. I was working at this Irish pub. They had called me in on St. Patrick's Day. Hey, can you work a morning shift? There's also a parade in the area. So I knew I was going to be making money. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, I'll come in. My shift was supposed to be from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. I arrive and it's already crowded. There were already four bartenders there, making me the fifth. It was kind of an all hands on deck situation because they knew we were going to be slammed. Irish pub, St. Patrick's Day, you get the gist. Now, if you've never worked in the service industry, you can kind of gauge how much money you're going to make. We were pulling in sh money, let me tell you, okay? My entire shift, the bar was packed. We all share tips. I noticed a girl says she's clocking out for the day because the bar started to slow down. And so I'm thinking, okay, we're all going to count on our tips and split it. That's how we, I've always seen it done. If somebody's leaving, all the bartenders have to go in the back. You count out the main tip jar, split it evenly. And then you start a new tip jar with the new people on the shift. And you do that every time somebody new comes on and somebody leaves. That didn't happen. She just left. I decided to pick up second shift and I'm like, okay, we're going to count out the tips, split it evenly, give it to everybody. Tell me why I go to the back of the bar. I see two girls counting out the tip jar without everybody there. I'm immediately sussed out. So I walk over there and I'm like, hey, what's going on? Are we like doing tips now? She goes, no, we just want to make sure like we have enough ones. I'm swapping out the ones for 20s and stuff like that. Very weird vibe. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I text my manager and I'm like, hey, so-and-so is counting out the tips. Are we supposed to be splitting the tips right now? He's also confused. Why is she counting out the tips? Mind you, in the morning, it started as five bartenders. Then two girls left, making it three bartenders. The first two girls had only worked like three hours. So they should get paid for that three hours. Not for the entire eight hours that I worked. Anyways, just seeing the tip jar and the like little credit card receipts, I'm like, we definitely should have made between three and $500 a piece. This was the first time in my life that I have left a shift without receiving my tips. My manager cut me. I was like, okay, when are we receiving tips? He goes, we'll do that at the end of the week. Next shift I come in, a week later, I get an envelope with my name in it. For the eight plus hours that I worked at a fully packed Irish pub on St. Patrick's Day, I received $150. I went straight up to my manager and I said, in my humble opinion, and you tell me if I'm wrong, tips should be counted out after every shift. Because now the two girls that only worked two hours, they're now technically getting paid more because they're taking out of the tip jar that had eight plus hours in it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not good at math, but let's just say the end all tip jar was $1,000. Everybody's now getting paid $200. Even the girl that worked two hours while I worked eight, that's how they split it. That was wrong. I really hope my kids don't want to be hockey players because I can't deal with those people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not all hockey players, but get this. Two years ago, I'm working at a restaurant and by a few, I mean 10. Captain of the Maple Leafs at the time was Dion Phaneuf and him and his brother come in and I was working in the arena and they were there to see the Britney Spears concert, okay? Bring them to their table, get them water and they're like, oh, how was Britney's soundcheck? And I was like, oh, she didn't do soundcheck. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, I don't think she's singing tonight. Like, what do you mean she's not singing tonight? And I'm like, no, no, like she'll be here, but like she's lip syncing. She didn't have to do soundcheck because she's lip syncing. I don't know what happened. These two fucking flip out at me. His brother specifically was like, what? You think Britney lip syncs? I'm like, I know Britney lip syncs. You just asked me how soundcheck was. She didn't go to it. And also I'm saying this as a fan. I'm no shade, but like, babe, like she's not singing. I don't know what happened. They start scrapping with me. I'm like, all right, I gotta ditch these two. Manager comes up to me and goes, Sam, that's the captain of the Leafs. You gotta bring him a bottle of champagne now. I'm like, okay, sorry. I don't know what those guys look like under their helmets and visors. Bring him a bottle of champagne. Next time I saw them, it was at the Rihanna concert like a year later. I'm like, I'm steering clear of those two. Anyway, three years after this, I'm at a house party in Vancouver and I don't know what the hell we were talking about, but I end up telling this story. I'm like, oh my God, yeah, I met that guy, Dion Phaneuf, once. And he came in with his brother and he yelled at me because I told him Britney Spears didn't do soundcheck. What a crazy series of events I did not think would ever happen. That was the extent of the story. I'm like, isn't that funny? Some dude at the other end of the party, like he was across the room. There were like 25 people at this party. I know you're not talking about Phaneuf right now. I'm like, oh uh, yeah, it's just a funny story. He was an amazing player. I'm like, I'm sure he was, man. He'd have been the best player in the world for all I fucking care. That's not what the story's about. Like, oh yeah, I was just telling this story about soundcheck Britney Spears and he's like, you don't talk about Phaneuf like that. This guy starts freaking the fuck out. The host of the party has to like interject being like, bro, 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 bro. This guy's like, no, she was talking about Phaneuf and he was my billet brother. Taught me a lot of valuable lessons and like, I know Joe goes to the bathroom with the host of the party and the host of the party is trying to calm him down in the bathroom because he's so pissed off that I told this story about Phaneuf like you don't talk about Phaneuf like that I'm like, like like what like he's the kind of guy that got kind of pissed when I said Britney Spears doesn't sing like what anyway I said to my girlfriend I'm like let's get out of here so we were leaving that guy had already gone downstairs so we're leaving and this guy's now in the lobby of the building and he intercepts us and he's like I hope you're not leaving because of me I'm like yeah we are leaving because of you and he's like I just I'm so sorry for how I reacted like that it's just like you know he's really tight with me we were billet brothers or whatever kept saying that he just taught me a bunch of lessons and I'm like whatever man and i literally just walked past her. like if this were a bunch of girls yelling at guys being like don't talk about like madonna like that don't talk about britney spears like that the guys would be like all right like relax like you don't get to just act like a crazy asshole because you're a boy and it's a sport and sports are so honorable like shut 
up. One hockey player is getting mad at me because I said Britney Spears lip syncs and the other one's getting mad at me because I told the story that this guy got mad that Britney Spears lip syncs. I'm like, the kids are not playing this sport. I want them to go into something heavy metal like lacrosse or rugby or <laughs> nothing actually. I don't want to drive them anywhere. The pilot's wife tried to fight me and they ended up giving us first class seats. Side note, this was her first time ever flying first class because of this incident. So at least I didn't have to pay for him. <laughs> Anyways, we were at the airport way too early in the morning. So my mom was like, I'm going to go get us some coffee. And I went to sit down in that little waiting area with my daughter. This man in a full suit passes by me. Man's is staring straight at the ground like if his life depended on it. I don't know how he didn't trip or fall because like, how are you going to see where you're going if you're looking straight at the floor, my dude? But that's going to make sense later because two seconds later, I hear this woman screaming and I'm like, bro, who is she screaming at? And she's like, you, you starts pointing at me. I'm like, me, what? What, what, what did I do? She's like, are you trying to take my man? Are you trying to sleep with my man? And starts pointing at the man with the suit. Keep in mind, he's sitting 50 seats away from me. Like, how do you put two and two together, sis? I'm like, no, I'm just trying to edit a YouTube video. At first, I thought it was a joke but i realized it wasn't when she starts charging at me bro full force immediately i put my daughter behind me because i don't want her to get hurt i post up because even if i don't know how to fight i'm not gonna get dragged in the airport part two on how the pilot's wife tried to fight me so this woman starts running full speed at me she's like right here i'm like right here like i'm ready even though i've never had like an actual fist fight all of the fights i've had with my cousins with my siblings prepared me for this moment she like lunges at me the man in the suit tries to hold her back she's fighting back so hard her chancla flew out it landed this close to where my daughter was sitting at if that chancla would have hit my daughter there would have been no more legs so i'm glad it didn't there's people standing up moving away from what's happening the airport police are running towards her trying to stop her but she is not having it she's still screaming that i ruined her marriage apparently the man in the suit was the pilot to our plane. He comes back, he's like, oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry. He says she wasn't okay that she had like a mental disorder. I don't know if he was lying to protect her or if she really was like not okay. But I'm no psychologist, so in a fight or flight, I'm finna fight. I guess he couldn't even fly the plane. They had to get another pilot to come fly this plane. The people up front to check you in, they were like, here, here's your new boarding pass. It's like, we're so sorry. And that is how we got to ride first class for the first time. I was shooting with this photographer who had found me on like one of my casting websites and was like let's shoot and it was like in the middle of nowhere it was Brooklyn no but it was like a part of Brooklyn that like I had never really heard of and I was like whatever so before this shoot I had like in these photos I had to like facetune smooth my face because I'm like <laughs> I have like like patches on my face of like makeup missing I also have no idea why I did this photo shoot because the photographer was like really creepy and just saying weird things to me the entire time and I've like shot with a lot of people where it's not creepy but he would just do this oh yeah that's a good oh that's oh that's such a good, oh that's such a good shot and my ex-boyfriend was there watching the whole thing and it was honestly just like a really creepy shoot but like thank god my ex-boyfriend was there because like i just think i would have felt not safe whatsoever if he wasn't there like i would have just felt so uncomfortable but hello the photographer was making like little digs at my boyfriend the entire time like what do you do like what or my ex-boyfriend like what do you do just kind of like i don't know why he was like doing that but looking back it's like really funny that he was like kind of talking to him a little bit my ex was like, why was he skiing rude? I was like, I don't know. It's just like a part of the craft. Like, I don't know. This photo is with my best friend, Tim. Tim is like me, but in boy form. And he's like a little bit more dramatic. But those photos were taken during like New Year's Eve while Tim was hosting a party. In the middle of this party, we made one of his friends stop and take photos of us for a good 20 minutes being like, get a better angle. Like the ball is about to drop, right? And there's 20 people in his living room. And we're like, wait, can you get one of us looking like this like thank you so much like looking back i'm like we have some great friends because like that's absurd and that's just like insanity that is the truth behind my instagram photos just some of them honestly whatever goodbye love you